As many of you know, every 10 years, an independent citizens commission draws new district boundaries based on the last census. This year, the new district boundaries caused two dozen lawmakers into early retirement or to go to new districts with new voters. This year, there are 26 races in the 80 member assembly with no incumbent and 10 of the 20 state Senate seats also have no incumbent. So how is the Democratic Party going to deal with all of this movement? and the potential for new faces. I spoke to the chair, Rusty Hicks, about all of it. I really wanted to get an opportunity to talk to you, especially after the new um, district boundaries have been drawn. There's been a lot of movement, a lot of change. We're hearing that more than two dozen state lawmakers are either going to retire or do some sort of career changes. Others are being forced into districts that, you know, they might be unfamiliar with the voters there. How are you guys as a party mobilizing to deal with all of this movement? Well, certainly uh, it's important to remember that this is a process that takes place every 10 years. Um, and uh, this is the second time we have had an independent commission draw our new lines at the state and federal levels. Um, and so th this happens every decade. Uh, obviously, we have seen a number of uh, state legislators um, retire or resign, uh, choosing not to run for re-election. It was obviously a big expected turnover in uh, 2024 and 2026 as a result of term limits. And I think many of those members said, you know what, I'll, I'll cut the two years short. Uh, and simply move forward to the next chapter in my in my life. But I, I would say that uh, the the map looks good for Democrats, both on the state and the federal level. Uh, obviously, we're going to take nothing for granted uh, and continue to engage uh, the recruitment of quality candidates, the endorsement of those of those candidates, uh, and then obviously engaging with voters uh, all the way through election day. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up about, you know, what kind of candidates you guys are looking for. Another interesting thing that I saw was that, you know, typically there's about in any election cycle, maybe six races where we're not seeing an incumbent, at least in the assembly. This year, there's going to be 26 races in the assembly with no incumbent and 10 in the state Senate. 80 percent of the state lawmakers who are leaving are men. So there are a lot of people talking about this is an opportunity for new energy, perhaps closing the gender gap. What do you expect the next uh, state legislature to look like, given the fact that there's going to be so many new faces? Well, my work and our work will be to ensure that there's a strong Democratic majority uh, in the state house, uh, certainly ensuring that our Democratic caucus and the legislature, broadly speaking, is representative of the beautiful diversity of California. Obviously, we've got some work to do with regards to the gender gap, uh, ensuring that there are more women leaders elected to, uh, to public office, not just at the state level, but at the federal level and the local level as, uh, as well, uh, but also to ensure that uh, the, the uh, legislature looks like uh, California. Uh, I think the Democratic Caucus and uh, the California Democratic Party has done um, a, a uh, made progress uh, in ensuring that that's the case. Is there anything concerning at all to you about the fact that so many people with experience are leaving or are you viewing it mostly as a positive thing? Well, you know, it, it, um, you, you get experience by getting in the trench and getting in the fight. Uh, and we've had, we have some great candidates that uh, have um, a solid record of accomplishment and leadership at the local level or in different um, areas and different facets of, of civic life. So I have every confidence uh, that uh, our state will continue to move forward under democratic leadership uh, that is elected this November. And, you know, in 2020, uh, Republicans were able to flip four congressional seats here in California. Um, many political analysts are saying that there's a very strong chance that they're going to retake the majority in the House. Um, are you guys concerned about any more congressional seats flipping here? Well, certainly my focus is, is making sure that we return uh, great members of Congress like Mike Levin uh, and Katie Porter and Josh Harder uh, to, uh, to, to the House. But we also got the opportunity to uh, hopefully pick up, uh, reclaim uh, a couple of those seats that we fell short in in, um, uh, in 2020. 
I mean, keep in mind in the seat in North Los, uh, northern part of LA County, we came up 333 votes short um, and, and in the middle of a, a global pandemic. And so I think we've got the opportunity based upon the map that's in front of us and the great candidates that have stepped forward and are leading in these seats uh, to hopefully do our part. We can't necessarily address what happens in other parts of the country, but we here in California are gonna ensure that we do our part uh, to keep the, the, the gavel uh, in Democrats' hands in the House. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up Mike Levinsey because that's one that the Republicans have, you know, told me that they're sort of focusing in on. And with the new district lines, it's looking like that's going to potentially be a tighter race. Are you guys devoting more resources into helping him campaign this time around? Mike Levin was a, a great candidate in 2018 and won re-election in 2020. And I have every confidence that he'll win re-election in 2022. Uh, because he's been doing the work in uh, Washington, D.C. and bringing home um, uh, um, deliverables uh, for, for his district and for, for Southern California. And so certainly that'll be a, a race that we focus on and, and we ensure that we do our part that he returns uh, in the fall. And we'll be right back.